All right, let me show you everything you need to know in order to understand BPMN gateways. In order to do this, I've prepared three diagrams for you. One diagram to explain the inclusive OR, one diagram the parallel gateway, and one diagram to explain the XOR and the event-based gateway. All right, what is this process about? So in this diagram here, this is about, this diagram is about submitting a loan request or a credit request in a bank, so to speak, and someone has to approve it. So in this process, you could imagine the first step is to submit a request. I will show you exactly how this looks like. After we submit the request, the system is waiting for an event. Two events are currently possible. The event down below here is a signal receiving event. This means if another system is sending a signal that the decision has been made automatically, we go this route and then the process will be done in the, in the sense of a write a request straight through processing. Or the alternative, if the decision was not made by another system, we have 10 seconds passed. In this example, it's just 10 seconds, but you could imagine a week. So if no system is approving it, we go this route and then the user has to check the request, let's say another team member, and has to decide if he wants to reject or approve the request. So this is this process here. Then the second process which interacts with this one here, I'm going to execute it in a second for you. Like I've mentioned, another system can make a decision and this process is this other system actually. It's just sending a signal like here and this signal which is sent here is going to be received here. That's this diagram and the last diagram we do in the end, I'm going to show you also a re request to submit this. All right, let me demonstrate this for you guys. So I will just start this process in my process engine. As you can see, the process is started. Currently, the token is here, submit request. So this activity has to be done next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh my task list. And you can see submit request is the activity here. So I'm going to claim this activity. And as you can see in the model, submit request is an activity. And this activity looks like this. There's just one attribute, the credit amount I have to enter here. Let's say I enter 10,000. In real life, of course, we would have a form here with like 10 fields or even more. For this demonstration purposes, I just have one field, the credit amount. So let's say it's 10,000 and I complete this. What you can see here when I refresh the diagram, now the token is at the event-based gateway. Now two things happen. Either the time is passing or another system is interacting here. So let's assume this other system is interacting. So I just call this process. And this process in the end calls or sends the signal which is going to be received here. So when I now refresh this page, you can see the token is gone because decision received and actually request straight through processed. So there's no other activity. So the token is gone. In this case, the system received the decision and the process is over. That's this case. Now let's also test the case above if no system is interacting and we have a timeout, so to speak, so 10 seconds pass. Let me demonstrate this for you too. So I'm going to start this process again. I'm going to refresh my task list here. And again, I can enter an amount. doesn't matter really. And uh, again, when I show this, when I show this to you, you should see exactly here, it's now waiting for an event. This time I'm not going to use the other system or the other process to make a decision. I'm gonna wait. So this means actually after the time has passed, the user again has to do an interaction. So let's quickly wait for this to happen. All right, as you have seen here, 10 seconds passed and now the token is in the check request activity. I'll check my task list and I can see check request activity a few seconds ago. So I can open it. And what it is, this form is very simple. Also, I can see the requested credit amount of 5,000. And here's the question, do you approve this request? Yes or no? I can do either way. Let me just go with no and I'll complete it. And when I go back to the process here, you can see the token is, is gone. So this process is done. The same would happen if I had uh, done yes, then we had approved but I did reject, so no, so it's request rejected. So this process is done in both ways. This is how you use the event-based in the X or gateway in a practical example. So how did we actually implement this? When I click on these receiving or catching action, uh, events, like this one, the time one, I can see this one is like listening 
as soon as the token is at the event based gateway, we're going to wait for a duration of 10 seconds. This here is an ISO norm, which just means it's 10 seconds of time. You could also implement other rules like one day, 24 hours, one hour, whatever. Or besides duration, you could also pick a date. So if there's a specific date met or in a cycle, you can ask uh, for cycles. Exactly. And then this one here, this is, this is a signal. Actually, it's just listening on a global variable. So there's a variable called signal. And as soon as this process is catching this variable, then the process moves on. And here in this process, in the end, I'm sending the signal, so to speak. So it's very important that the name here and the name over here are the exact same. So the system knows how to match them. And how do we actually implement the X or either or gateway? This was also quite simple. Here in this task, we have an attribute is approved. If you remember, we had the question, do you approve this request? And there are two values, yes and no. Yes and no here, so to speak, is the, uh, the enumeration values. And in this XOR gateway, we are asking for this value. So actually here you can see is approved equals yes. Then we go this route. And if it's no, we go the other route. This is how the XOR gateway is operating. So this is a real if then else statement, so to speak. And the event-based gateway is a bit more complex. It's really listening if an event is occurring. All right, then this was the helper process to send the signal. And here I used the parallel gateway. So to speak, you could see it like this, whenever this process is kicked in, in parallel, these two activities, let's for example, say an email is sent and a database is updated, both happen parallel. And only if both tasks gets successfully closed, only then we are sending the signal. This is how the parallel gateway works. Everything between these brackets here happen in parallel and the process can only proceed only then if all are done. That's the parallel gateway. Now let me show you a different case I've prepared for you, this time with the inclusive OR. It's a kind of like similar scenario. Again, it's about submitting a credit request. So the user is submitting something and based on the amount submitted, we have different routes. So if it's a lower amount below 25,000, then we want to have a check request by a peer member. If it's above 25K, the team lead is going to check the request. And if it's above 50K, we have the manager to do it. So what is now special about the inclusive OR? As you can see, let's say the amount is 100,000. What is going to happen? What do you think? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about this. Or maybe you can stop the video. I'm going to explain. If the amount is over 50k, let's say 100,000, then both of these flows here are gonna validate to true because both is right. So both will happen. So both activities are going to get started. And that's the tricky thing about the inclusive OR. More than one path are going to be followed or at least one, you could say. At least one path will be followed. In some cases, more than one and some only one. And with the either OR, if you remember here, it's just exactly one, never both, never, okay? All right, and of course, if the amount is very low, then only this path here is gonna get chosen. So let me also demonstrate this case for you. So I'm gonna start it again in my engine, exactly. So that's the process, now submit credit is the activity. Let me refresh the task list, submit credit, exactly. So what we're gonna do is, let's make a low amount for now. So 10K first, complete it refresh this one and then you can see because the amount is below 25k and this is the only condition which is met this activity here the peer request is going to get um, going to get used so i can open it you can see check request peer i'm opening this and whatever okay and it's done now the token disappears perfect so let's try the same now for the different flow. So I'm gonna start the diagram again, the model. I'm going to open this activity again. So let's now do something a bit more, but not fully. So let's go with 30K. 30K, what is going to happen? I made 30K, what is going to happen? I give you a couple of seconds to think about this. I'll stop the video. Exactly, how we've probably thought about this. 30K means the team lead has to request it. The peer is not doing it because we have the condition below or equal 25k and a manager only gets involved 
when we have more than 50k. So it's just the team lead. And this is also what is happening here. So this activity for the team lead is active. So we're going to claim it and whatever. And it's done. Now, the last question, what's going to happen if I make a big amount? We have clarified this already. So you should know, I hope. We can quickly also play this through so you can see it in real life. How would this look like? So we're going to make 100k, right? Looks like this. And now, ta-da, you can see two tokens have been generated. An inclusive org can create multiple tokens, although only one token is getting in. An XOR is not able to do this, right? An XOR is only to able, only able, an XOR is able to get multiple tokens, but only is going to release one. That's the big difference between XOR, so the either or, and this one here, the inclusive or. All right, now we have two tasks. We can also check this again in the engine. Exactly, team lead and manager both is there. And um, exactly, when we just accept it. So what's going to happen is now you can see one token has moved and the other one is still there. Also a tricky thing about the inclusive or or something you can easily forget is, it's true, multiple tokens can be created, but after the inclusive or, we will only proceed if all the tokens which have been created come together in the end. So in this case, it's not like that this token would go to the end and the other one would stay here. No, this token here is only moving as soon as the token above joins the inclusive or. Okay, so that's also a big difference in specialty. So the manager exactly the same and approving it, it's okay. And then we are gone. All right, of course, this example may not be the best to do in pre in prax in the real world. Maybe you want to do the team lead only, and when he when he approves, then it goes to the manager. But I just took this example here to demonstrate the inclusive or for you guys. Let me know in the comments.